I'm Ellen Rubin. I'm co-founder of CloudSwitch. So tell us, uh, our readers who may not be familiar with uh, CloudSwitch, uh, what you guys do. Sure. Um, so we're a venture-backed company in Boston, and uh, actually just at the show here at Structure, we announced the commercial availability of our CloudSwitch enterprise software. And what we do is we help enterprises that have existing data centers and applications be able to run their applications in whichever target cloud they want to use, but have the applications still feel like they're running locally, so they don't, they don't change anything at all about the applications or any of their management tools and policies. Those just all continue to run as they always did, but now they're in the cloud. And uh, how, do you, how do you deliver all this? So um, we have a software product that's a downloadable VM, uh, so it's a software appliance. It installs really, really easily into the customer's data center and uh, allows you to uh, point and click your applications with all of the uh, computing, storage, and networking into whichever target cloud you want. We're cloud provider agnostic and we're hypervisor agnostic. So you can take stuff and you know move it between VMware and Zen environments, for example. We, uh, we support uh, Amazon's EC2 and Terramark clouds uh, as of today. And, um, What's happening underneath is that we've actually uh, securely uh, encrypted all of the communications out to the cloud and within the cloud, as well as all of your data, automatically gets encrypted. And we are mapping your application into the target cloud, so it's exactly the same as it was before, down to the kernel and OS level. And we also do a layer two bridge between the data center and the cloud, so IP address and identity stay the same. So for administrators and users, it still looks like it's running within your data center, but you get all of the benefits of the cloud. So tell me a little bit about the, the users that, uh, that you're seeing interest from and, and what some of your customer base looks like. Sure. So we've been working with um, hundreds of beta customers uh, and uh, done a lot of uh, work with both Fortune 500 companies in the financial services and pharma industries as well as with a set of mid-tier companies that are across a bunch of different industries. And what's uh, uniting them is that they have a lot of infrastructure already, typically hundreds or thousands of servers already. And they're really excited about the cloud, but the cloud feels like it's a different planet. You know, they've got legacy stuff, they've got all sorts of processes, control issues, security issues. So we essentially make that all transparent and we make it really familiar and secure. And um, what we've been finding is that there are kind of two broad areas of use cases. One is kind of traditionally development and test environments that people want to get out of their data centers because they feel like it's taking up a lot of space and production resources, and they only want to use them when they need them for you know new builds and stuff like that out in the cloud and, and scalable QA. So that's very, very common. The other thing that the customers have started to do with our product and the beta testing is to take production apps, primarily web apps like um, uh, e-commerce, uh, collaboration, marketing sites, and want them to run in the cloud because they don't want to have to keep growing out their colos and stuff like that, getting all the scalability for peak, but still have all of the connectivity back into the data center and all of the control and security. So one of the hot topics is always enterprise adoption of the cloud, where the enterprise sector is in, in terms of their their decision-making process. The things CloudSwitch is doing speak to some of the concerns that they have. What, what's your take of where enterprise adoption is and, and what the key sort of questions and issues are at this point in the, on the curve? Sure. You know, it's, it's, it's early days, right? I mean, the cloud providers are still early, you know, the, the technologies are early, but um, I would say that we have the difference between where we were when we started the company, you know, my co-founder and I started it two years ago, and where we are now, it's unbelievable. It's like this incredible accelerating process in which the largest brand name companies that you would think might be very conservative about, you know, oh, what's this cloud thing, are going headlong at it, either because people are just doing it and it's just happening, or because you have very sort of forward-thinking people at, you know, IT management, CIO level, who say, this is the, this is the way it's going to go, and strategically we need to be doing it, and so now let's start getting our strategy, getting the architecture, figuring out which products and which clouds we're going to use and which applications can go where. And that's, that's totally going on. So you see a lot of activity with um, consulting firms and systems integration firms helping that process along. And you see vendors like us having a lot of activity with proof of concept and early deployments. Um, so that's really where things are. So we saw there, there are four issues that we think are the four issues. And those are security and concerns about my data. Um, the work that it would take to have to re-architect something that you've already got for a particular cloud, you know, let alone if it's a, you know, a different multiple set of clouds. Um, and then the fact that what's going on in the cloud is really separate, and so you can't use all of the management and policy and control stuff that you had. And then the fourth one is about lock-in. People have told us consistently, I don't want to feel like I've created something and now it's just running in a particular cloud and now, now what if I want to bring it back? 
or what if I decide that that's not the right cloud and I want to put it in a different cloud? So those are the four problems we think are really the big hurdles for enterprise adoption of those are the ones we solve. So you've talked about it being early days and, and identified some of the, the particular issues. What's your sense of uh, what lies ahead and how are you thinking about uh, the, the future of cloud switch and sort of thinking about uh, adapting what you guys are, are doing and offering? So it's all about scaling up the customer base right now for us. That's key. You know, we're, the product works. It's deployed. We've proved it. You know, the technology is, is in good shape. Um, so more clouds. We're just going to, you know, it's, we have uh, Terramark and EC2 right now, but we're definitely going to add more clouds uh, in a very sort of steady pace based on the customer demand. And then there's a lot of work that we're doing right now in terms of enabling optimization around your uh, networking and bandwidth because as people start to want to put things out into the cloud and it's not just a little initial footprint, that's the bottleneck. And so we're working with a lot of the players in the industry and you should hear more news about that coming up. Listen, Alan, thanks so much for, for telling our readers a little bit about Cloud Switch and, uh, and, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you.